Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Every once in a while, there is a new product which is released, which is absolutely disruptive to the marketplace. These new CPUs, GPUs, or whatever, are so much faster than their competitors, or offer new features, that nothing else in the marketplace can really, well, compete. They typically have several characteristics. For one, the timing in the marketplace is perfect, i.e. they release when the competitor just doesn't have a comparable option. The second is that they also take advantage of new manufacturing processes, not only smaller and denser uh, nodes, for example, but also things like chiplets or what have you. They bring with them new architectures and new features to boot. As you probably guessed from the title of this video, I'm hearing very similar things for AMD's Zen 5, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about in this video, along with some updates to the performance, which actually at this point, it really does seem that Zen 5 is totally ludicrous, not only in IPC, but clock frequency as well. But we're going to touch on some Zen 6 updates, as well as Sarlacc. There's a lot of stuff to get through here, and we're going to do so right after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you've just built a new gaming PC over Christmas and need a software upgrade, or perhaps even some games, or want to build a new rig with all of the hardware coming out in 2024, WhoKeys has you covered this Valentine's Day with amazing discounts on Windows 10 keys, Windows 11, Office packages, Visual Studio, and even, well, games. And to top it off, you can use our code, which is RGT, for an additional 25% off of the already discounted packages. There are huge discounts on various software and operating systems. For example, you can get Windows 10 Pro for just $17, and of course, it can be upgraded to Windows 11, or even Microsoft Office for just $48.85. And if you don't fancy the upgrade steps from Windows 10 to 11, you can pick up a straight copy of Windows 11 directly for just just over 23 US dollars after the additional 25% off code is used, which again is RGT. Personally, I've had very positive experiences buying from their platform using my own personal account. I've also had friends use Hookie's store as well. For example, one of them wanted to pick up Microsoft's Visual Studio as they were a budding developer, and they wanted to save a few bucks, and a number of them have also bought Windows keys. The purchasing process is very straightforward. All you have to do is browse through the products, and see which one you're interested in, hit the buy now option, and of course you'll be directed right to the shopping cart. There you can apply our code, which is again RGT, to enjoy that extra 25% off, the already heavily discounted Valentine's Day price, and then you can just finish your purchase and the code will arrive in less than five minutes. Again, thanks very much to Hookies for sponsoring the channel, and thank you if you're considering one of the purchases and helping to support the channel as well. To get us all onto the same page, I'll give you guys a quick recap of what I said in a video from about a week back. Now, if you want, you can watch that older video, but I will add the slides from that video into this one to help refresh your memory or just to get you up to speed. Now, this is going to be in a TL didn't watch format. So if you want further information in much more detail, you can watch that older one. But basically, I was told that despite a number of my own sources claiming 15% IPC gains were roughly what you could expect from Zen 5, which of course also matched up from slides from Moore's Law is dead. Well, things were getting a bit weird because now I was hearing from multiple people and these are folks who generally have given me very good information that the numbers were underselling what Zen 5 is capable of in terms of IPC. Now of course workload performance can vary a lot for example, is it single thread? Is it multi thread? What type of application are you testing? You know the drill. But I was hearing that in application performance, 30% above in some cases was very possible with Zen 5 over Zen 4. And I want to stress that these were not like very unique workloads, but very typical what you would expect from a lot of applications in terms of benchmarking. I was also told that there was no frequency regression and AMD were basically onto a winner. Now, I am skimming over a lot of the older details because I don't want to eat up tons of video time for a video that you may have already watched. And besides, the slides on screen are probably going to be enough. But if you want more context and kind of information, you can watch that older video. But let's get into the new stuff because I've basically been now hearing from more sources that 30% IPC 
seems very certain. Now, I still want to be cautious about this because, frankly, the numbers are so damn high. But again, multiple people are now telling me that this number is almost certainly correct. The Zen 5 Granite Ridge production step is ready, and the final Agisa is being worked on. So, in theory, anyway, we should get more details pretty soon and some actually pretty legitimate benchmarks and actual leaks probably over the next couple of months, hopefully. There is no clock frequency regression. In fact, 6 GHz isn't out of the question. Now, of course, that does you fall on the usual caveats of CPU boosting, and you guys know how that works, so I won't go into it. But um, basically, I was very cautious about this because, again, I was hearing that there would either be similar clocks or even a regression, but I was told when I asked a couple of people that the A0 silicon turned out just better than expected, and they actually had time for a respin. Further, the IOD is very similar between Zen 4 and Zen 5. Essentially, you can almost think of them as like a copy and paste, but it is more refined. So, while it is technically very similar architecturally, it should still support faster memory. Um, now, I don't want to quote anyone for obvious reasons, but a common theme I'm told is that in terms of the CPU architecture, AMD are going to get a big shining moment in the spotlight. Um, I will focus primarily on desktop for this video, but I'm actually told that the gains are larger in server. Now, this isn't because IPC gains go up magically necessarily, although of course server workloads do differ versus let's say a, a typical desktop, and you do have other things like memory bandwidth and whatever to take into consideration, which does affect performance a little bit, but the really big reason is that Turin, which of course is the server part, is going to be 500 watts over 400 from the previous generation. Now, basically speaking, I'm told that, let's just say over 1.4x performance increases with a 96 versus 96 core part. Now, I don't need to tell you guys that when it comes to compute density, it's extremely important in the server blade. Now, yes, of course, Turin will have a higher power consumption but the density of compute is well worth that like 100 watts or so sacrifice. Further to this, and this actually has popped up, I want to give credit to uh, foreignx.com, I think that's how you pronounce the uh, website. Anyway, AMD have started Zen 5 enablement for GNU compilers. Um, now, basically, you can see on screen what they are, so I'm not going to read out all of them. Um, but there are stuff for 5 uh, AVX 512 here and also Prefetch I. Now, this is over the support for Zen 4 architecture, so Zen 4 did not support those functions. Some of these instructions have been supported by Intel previously. For example, some stuff was for IceLink, but Granite Rap uh, Rapids will also be adding Prefetch I as well, and... Um, we're going to see that for other future uh, Intel CPUs, such as, for example, PantherLink. Now, what this basically means is that there is no ISA differences between the various iterations of Zen 5. This is not really a surprise. I'm not telling you guys anything groundbreaking here. You can essentially think that desktop instructions or mobile instructions will pretty much copy and paste over Turing, as well as the dense parts, etc., etc. Now, some of these changes and uh, improvements for instructions had leaked online, including from myself. But, of course, with anything, a leak is not the same thing, even slightly, as official acknowledgement. So, I just want, you know, to let you guys know that that's pretty important. Um, I'm also going to just quickly remind folks about some of the anticipated Zen 5 iterations in the manufacturing process. Now, some of the stuff is pretty well established anyway, but I'm just going to let you guys... Kind of, I'm just going to throw it in just because. So Turing regular is going to be Zen 5, 128 cores, 4 uh, NP. Granite Ridge um, Zen 5 for desktop is 16 cores. Again, same manufacturing process for uh, N4P. And Turing Dense Zen 5 C goes up to 192 cores and is based on N3E. Now, I'm tempting to verify some additional Zen 6 details, but mostly pertaining to the desktop environment, so I can say the following. Um, so, Medusa's, or should I say Zen 6 IPC gains, they are smaller than Zen 5, but they're still going to be decent. So, 
it's not that you're going to see you know one percent ipc gains you're not, just not going to see such a big profound gap between uh, zen 4 and zen 5. zen 6 is going to focus a lot on packaging technologies particularly things like the iod now to give you a basic understanding, a general guideline of the packaging, you can kind of think of it a bit like N31, although there are several differences. So it's not a one-to-one -one copy, but it gives you a rough understanding. Sarlacc, which of course is going to be the Halo Strix Point products, they are basically kind of like a test for what AMD are going to be doing in the future for Zen 6. Desktop is likely to stick with DDR5 and PCIe5. Now, I'm still hearing really mixed information, whether it's going to be on AM, uh, AM5 motherboards. Some folks are saying it's going to be AM5 Plus or AM6 or whatever it ends up being called. Personally speaking, I think AMD are going to be sticking to um, AM5 platform. I could be wrong. Again, there is a lot of mixed information on that. So we're just going to wait and see. But I think it's probably likely they're going to stick on it because if it's still using DDR5 and PCIe5, unless they're going to do something absolutely nuts like quad channel memory, which I'm sure you can agree is probably not exactly likely. And I've certainly heard no whispers of that. So, you know, it's not really like they need to move to a new uh, platform, a new socket, unless they physically need a larger, um, you know, unless the chips are physically larger and they can't put them in the same footprint. Or there's something else. Maybe they, they want to give more additional PCIe lanes or something like that. I don't know. Just generally, I think it's very likely they're going to stick to the same AM5 socket. But again, heard a lot of mixed things about that. But let's move to Sarlacc. Now, the general consensus I'm hearing about these upcoming APUs is, well, good. Um, as a very quick refresher, Sarlacc will be the halo products of Strix Point. You can see on screen some of the slides that I put together about a month ago just under a month ago i guess um now of course these halo products they're going to basically appeal to professionals or gamers who need a ton of cpu and gpu power it's going to be in a single chip now that's obviously going to put i don't need to say this it's pretty obvious but it's going to put a ton of pressure on nvidia because obviously a lot of products um for nvidia are shipped of course for mobile and so when you start having you know, the lower end RTX products basically being kind of pointless in the future. I think Sarlacc is not going to be the product that does it, but it's certainly going to be the future. And I think Intel are going to go very similar as well. There's going to be some very interesting chips from Intel. So it's going to be just, it, let's just say it's going to be interesting to see what Nvidia does in the mobile market. But um, you can see on screen the uh, Strix Point. Now there are a couple of Strix Point chips we have a single Zen 5 CCX, Zen 5 C CCX. Of course, it's based on RDNA 3.5, one 16 megabyte L3 and one six, uh, sorry, eight megabyte L3, depending on what the CCX is. And you can also see on screen, it's a four and an eight core CPU, depending whether it's Zen 5 or Zen 5 C. And that's with eight um, RDNA 3.5 workgroup processors. I've heard that the clock frequency was over 3 gigahertz with enough TDP. You can also see the Strix Point Halo product. So two Zen 5 CCXs. So this is the full Zen 5, of course. 16 megabytes times two, so 32 megabytes total of uh, L3 cache. Um, 20 work group processors based on rdna 3.5 so 40 total compute units 256 bit lpddr5 support ai engine i've heard different figures between 50 and 60 tops personally i'm guessing 60 but i'm not certain and i was told that in an unknown benchmark i couldn't get the benchmark but i was told it's faster than the 7600 xtm and the tdp that was being tested was 120 watts with those numbers now i've got a few updates for you the first is that the Strix Point Halo has apparently a CPU core cluster and the IO die. Now, these are low power cores. They are not the same thing as the Zen 5 CCXs. So I want to be very clear, the Zen 5 CCXs are not part of the IO die. They are not literally integrated into it. What I'm saying is that this is a separate set of CPUs, which are basically for high, um, which are basically for like background tasks. The Zen 5 CPUs will be, if you're gaming and, you know, idle background tasks, that type of thing can be on the IO die. 
I also had additional confirmation that the 32 megabytes of L3 um, is unified with the GPU. Clocks are very impressive. Um, it seems that it's going to be very similar, actually, to, you know, 3 gigahertz plus that I mentioned Strix Point was hitting. Now, obviously, when it comes to clock frequency, it's going to depend a lot on the amount of TD, uh, sorry, on the, on the, um, and the voltage, you know, the power that you kind of shove into it and the cooling. But I was told around 35 T-flops with dual issue, I'm going to stress that, with dual issue, that's possible. Performance in games is really excellent. And they can take on some pretty high-end GPUs. Now, obviously, again, I just really want to stress that this is going to be dependent on the setup. So if it's like in a you know very if it's basically a battery limited kind of situation with crappy cooling then obviously it's not going to be the same thing but unfortunately for me some of these points come from different people i've done the best to verify them you know what i can but ultimately i think that this is going to be a very interesting product i will be also curious to see its uh, acceptance into the market by you know well vendors such as well laptop manufacturers basically um, I have heard that it's probably more of a proof of concept, kind of like a limit, more limited production part. Hopefully that's incorrect. Um, obviously, Strix Point itself is not going to be like that. It's going to be in a lot more chips. But the Halo Sarlacc products, yeah, I'm hearing it's going to be a little more limited. Now, personally speaking, with any rumor, I do like to take it with some level of caution. I'm still somewhat skeptical about the 30 plus percent IPC gain over its predecessor because honestly that is so absolutely ridiculous but at this point several people have come up to me and said that these numbers are correct I really want to stress that these sources have given me a lot of information in the past which was absolutely right on the money so at this stage, honestly, I'm just waiting for the benchmarks or some official disclosures from AMD, and I'm going to be looking at them with bated breath, because even if it is only a 15-ish percent IPC gain, that's pretty impressive. But if it is 30% or more, holy crap, that is, that is monumental. That is just absolutely absurd. I will also be very curious to see how Arrow Lake does as well. I've been hearing some very interesting whispers. Now, what I pretty much am certain of is that the leaks from Igor's lab in terms of the performance over its predecessor are correct. However, I have heard that those were basically internal projections. And now the chips are starting to come out and apparently ES2 is going to be ready in the next couple of months-ish. Performance may be a little bit higher. Now, with Igor's lab... Those numbers are not IPC, so they are basically um, 250 watts, so that both CPUs are essentially running, or both CPU architectures are running at 250 watts. The parts are obviously comparable in core count, but um, again, IPC is not being tested. Now, this is really important because what we know about Arrow Lake is that the clock frequencies are considerably lower. There is a big regression. I was hearing that the performance cores of Arrow Lake were targeting low to mid 4 gigahertz. But I've heard some whispers that they may actually be running those CPUs a little bit higher than early projections. Honestly, I'm not too certain about that. We'll have to wait and see. It will be extremely interesting, though, to see how Intel does with Arrow Lake. And that's not even to take into consideration things like all the server processes. It will be a very interesting couple of years in the desktop, is all I have to say as well. I will be very curious to also see what happens concerning the X3D variants of Zen 5. Because the general consensus I've heard for quite some time from pretty much everyone is that the um, vanilla Zen 5 CPUs will typically outperform Zen 4 X3D when it comes to gaming. Now, there are always some, you know, asterisks there. Perhaps, for example, games which really do love that additional V cache, it would be much closer. Um, I think Flight Simulator is one of them. I'm sure you guys can point some others out in the comments below. But, um, I will be very interested to see how Zen 5 scales with this additional cache. With that said, I think that's just about enough for me in this video. Um, hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, well, it's YouTube. Leave a like and all of that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.